Hey. Hello. Hey. Um, I'm actually in the chat itself. I'll post the link to the newsletter as well in case anybody doesn't get it or didn't open it or whatever. Um, because that has the uh, five calls example script and it has the link to an article that Karen wrote today about um, consent decrees and what they are in the history. Um, the actual data, you know, instead of the wild hypothesis, hypothetical situation that is put forward by Jeff Sessions. I did cite statistics, didn't I? You <laughs> did. It's my way. <laughs> okay. um, but the suggestion from Five Calls is to call the Department of Justice, um, and it does not say to call a specific person. All right. It says, hi, my name is, and it says, you know, this is the number, Department of Justice slash Attorney General, and gives the number. Okay. So. That session's voicemail, just where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. So we were thinking about consent decrees. Um, we've called about health care for the last many weeks in a row, which is not unreasonable, and we will take that back up. Um, yeah, likely. But we thought that there's another issue on the radar, and well, there's a few. Um, they're trying to reform the post office, and that seems like a good idea, uh, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about police consent decrees, um, which I did not know a thing about, and now I know a little bit about. I also know a little bit about it, thanks to you, Karen, and to your <laughs> informative article. Hey. Nice. <laughs> Read my book. Uh, right. So basically, a consent degree is when somebody, like generally government, the EPA or whoever, sues a company, uh, often antitrust, uh, to say, here's some things that you're doing wrong. And the company says, well, we don't admit that's wrong, but we'll agree to take these steps. Uh, so that you'll stop suing us. And when they reach the agreement about what those steps would be to satisfy the government, then they enter into the consent decree. So that's not an admission of guilt. It does not bring with it any liability, um, but it does get approved by a judge and then it gets overseen by a judge. Okay. So it has, it's legally binding. So once you agree to these things, then the judge sees to it that you do it, not the government anymore or not the executive branch who, who sued you. So that didn't used to be allowed. The, we weren't. We didn't used to be allowed to sue police departments. But after Rodney King, we thought maybe we wanted to, um, <laughs> and we tried. And we tried to sue the LA Police Department. Found out we couldn't. Um, so they changed the law to say that we could. Um, at which point, uh, since then, which is mid '90s, I guess the first consent decree was entered in '97. Um, there's been 20, which is not no. like tons, but no. it is some, and they cover big cities and small cities and varying degrees. And obviously each consent decree is unique for how much they've agreed that they need to do. Um, so the big ones outstanding right now are Chicago and Baltimore have been uh, agreed to and entered in, but uh, the Justice Department is now rethinking that and saying, well, maybe we should delay or even not enact that at all. And in fact, we want to uh, review all 14 that are in place right now and see if they're really necessary. Um, so these consent decrees are when the government feels there's a pattern of abuse of civil liberties, such as sustained police brutality, uh, racist behavior, stop and frisk, for example, um, lots of people getting shot or dying in police custody, uh, but there has to be a pattern of abuse. So once they see enough that they can bring a suit, then the police department can agree that, well, we can take these steps, even though we don't admit that it was a problem. Uh -huh. So those steps tend to be things like training officers uh, to de-escalate or about implicit bias or, you know, all those things that you might hope for. 
Um, it could be technology. It could be uh, introducing dash cams or police body cams or other things that might reduce uh, such incidents. And it could also be taking away technology. So obviously, uh, our I don't know if you know this, but our police departments have been flooded with military equipment. Um, this is terrible. Because if you give men big fancy toys, they will ultimately want to use them. And so that has caused SWAT teams and such to really escalate and Tank cause rolling down the streets in Ferguson. So some police departments have agreed to voluntarily give up some of that equipment. Uh, so that's like a reduction in technology. Um, and then also management um, directives about, you know, there'll be you'll review every incident of such and such and there will be a discussion about it. And then big transparency things about um, data being published. So that was a big thing that Obama was always looking for was additional data to be provided. And since we have hardly any data about people who die in police custody, which is crazy, um, that seemed to be a good thing to me. Um, so, the you know, and also, finally, community outreach. So that's a common one. So saying that we're going to have, you know, town halls with the citizens and figure out what's working, what's not. We're going to do maybe community policing where we stay in the community and we walk the beat and we try to get to know the people in the community and build trust, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, so community policing is sort of controversial, but I think a lot of those other things maybe are, are less so. Mm -hmm. um, I actually know a lot of that's controversial. You would so, think it wasn't, but yes. So the question then is, do those things work? And the statistics say, if by work you mean um, fewer civil rights abuses, then yes, they seem to. Um, but Jeff Sessions is saying that that handcuffs the police and it causes an increase in crime because the police aren't, they have to second guess themselves. They're not allowed to just beat people or shoot people. And that's bad. Um, Right. So he's arguing that there is an increase in crime. Um, yeah. So that that was my monologue. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> that, that, that moment. That moment. <laughs> right. So. Um, right. So where I would like to call the Department of Justice and express my concern. Sure, you can review the decrees, but I am worried uh, that they will be giving weight to the wrong items, mm -hmm. I think. I think we really need to worry much more about citizens and victims of police brutality than we need to worry about the police who are trained and armed. And I think we all can see after the Philandro Castile video that things have tipped way too wrong, far in the wrong direction. Um, um, and his family actually was able to sue and they got, I think, a settlement for like three million or something, something paltry, like really. But it's the one thing that was left after yeah. being so unjust that it's absolutely staggering. It's, it's so unjust it takes the breath away. And I it moves me to action. Like I, I saw the video. I don't watch those things. I don't know I watched that one. And I sat here and cried. So, um, And I don't normally watch those things either. But the video. So there's the video of him being shot. Right. And then there's the video of his fiance and that toddler, which... Yeah is mortifying like it just it rips your heart out of your chest both things are different and equally horrible and the fact that his fiance stays polite is what's her choice i mean that it was crazy well she'll get shot too but that's that just goes to how messed up all of this is mm -hmm. yeah if she in that situation had to keep her head that's totally unreasonable our our country has got to Anyway, so I feel about I feel passionately about this one. I think this is worth a call. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, so who's gonna go first? You I'm gonna need to calm down. So why is it so <laughs> I will go first. <laughs> this is my agitated face. <laughs> all right, one five five nine. I'm using the exact script from Five Calls, BT Dubs. That will work. Thank you for calling. You have reached the Department of Justice public comment line. Your opinion is valuable to us, and any comments you make will be considered. However, we cannot return telephone calls made to this number. But trust us, you consider your opinion. The local police or the Office of the Federal Bureau 
level of investigation in your area. If you would like to write to us, our address is Office of the Attorney General, U.S. Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., 20530. Again, thank you for calling. Please leave your comment after the tone. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, my name is Natasha Kingston. I'm a citizen from Denison, Texas, Ray Drive, 75020. I'm calling to express my disapproval of the Justice Department's delay in enacting consent decrees made with police departments across the country. Our criminal justice system is in need of major reform, and any rollback of these efforts could prove detrimental to the safety of many Americans. Thank you for your time and attention. That's it. You really did go verbatim, didn't you? What's that? You really did just go word for word. That's yep. cool. That's cool. All right. I'm going to go. This is me going. <laughs> go. Yeah, I think it's a good, like, you know, we have an example of one of us using the scripts that are provided out there, and then the example of somebody who writes their own and is, uh, you know, all thoughtful and creative. Oh, I wonder how many of these calls they get. Thank you for calling. You have reached the Department of Justice public comment line. Probably some. It's valuable to us, and any comments you make will be considered. At least However, four. we cannot return telephone calls. <laughs> At least four. This number. If you have a critical law enforcement issue, please contact your local police or the Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in your area. We are not 911. If you would like to write to us, our address is Office of the Attorney General. U.S. Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., 20530. Again, thank you for calling. Please leave your comment after the tone. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, my name is Karen Suhaka, and I am a citizen from Denver. My zip code is 80203, um, and I appreciate that you have this line so that I can leave my thoughts. Um, I'm calling to express my concern uh, about the review of the existing police consent decrees. Um, I certainly think it's worthwhile to make sure the effort and money spent on reforms related to the decrees have not increased crime. I understand that concern, but I am worried that not enough weight will be given to the positive impacts of better protecting civil rights of vulnerable citizens. I think that we need to really worry about the Constitution and keep that foremost in our mind. So I hope that you will Keep that in mind as you go through this exercise. Okay, thanks. Bye. Nice. Yay. Awesome. Little addendum. Civil, civil rights. <laughs> um, I can go. Go. Do it. You can speak for the youth. Make it count. The youths. <laughs> That's all <right. laughs> Hey, I wonder what she's going to say. Ooh, maybe someone will pick up. Thank you for calling. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i am our address is Office of the Attorney General, U.S. Can we write to you? Maybe we should write to you. Washington, D.C., 20530. Again, thank you for calling. Please leave your comment after the tone. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello, uh, my name is Sarah Johnson, and I'm a citizen of Dillon, Colorado, 80435. Um, and I'm calling to express my concern over the review of the existing police consent decrees. It's definitely worthwhile to make sure the effort and money spent on the reforms um, and the decrees are properly studied and interpreted to truly know how they can improve and impact our society. I'm worried that not enough weight will be given to the positive impacts that work to protect the civil rights of our vulnerable citizens, and it will be lost in the argument um, over how this affects policing because good, simple training for officers, like implicit bias recognitions are really important and shouldn't be pushed to the side 
recent events in our society have proven a better need for training with things like implicit bias and de-escalation techniques. I really hope that the delay um, and these decrees will be lifted. Thank you. So okay. I was um, convinced I, by that. <laughs> so I have to tell you before I go that I have Supernatural on in the background. <laughs> and having these guys go out and take down demons, I think, is the perfect backdrop for what we're doing. I, just have to <laughs> I like it. I am going to go pretty brief. Uh, because I figure hopefully they get a lot of these calls. Hopefully. Okay, let's see. 202. And Karen, thank you so much for the script. I did adjust it. My pleasure. I'll be your speechwriter anytime. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we have a call tomorrow, right? <laughs> we could even put some numbers in. Yeah, I don't, I don't have those in mind. Thank you for calling. You have reached the Department of Justice Public Health. Jeff. Your opinion is valuable to us. Should I say hi, Jeff? Will be considered. <laughs> no. If you have a critical law enforcement issue, please contact your local police or the Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in your area. If you would like to write to us, our address is Office of the Attorney General. It's weird that they suggest you call the FBI. Yeah. Washington, D.C. Alien Invasion, X-Files. Again, thank you for calling. Please leave your comment after the tone. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello, my name is Cheryl Pryor. I'm a citizen from St. Louis, Missouri. My zip code is 63126. I'm calling because I'm concerned about the review of existing police consent decrees, which delays legal action already agreed upon. I expect leadership throughout the United States to protect the civil rights of vulnerable citizens. So let's please move forward with the consent decrees already in place. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mic drop. Boom. Thank you. Yay. So the, I think there's a lot of power in getting behind the same message. Um, did you say that one of the states said if they get about seven calls on something, then, then yeah. that's an impact? So we don't know what the federal number is, but I imagine it doesn't really take huge numbers to get people to at least take notice that there is opposition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dean Heller said he got something between 10 and 20,000 calls, like 13,000 or something, calls about health care, and that was enough that he's voting no. So who knows if that's right, but like that's not, that number's not out of reach when you're talking about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. so, and I think we just did awesome. We did do awesome. All right. Go we team did us. Because we were all doing what Superman does. <laughs> Changing the phone booth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm always here for you guys. Ever need to laugh after you've been crying? What's up? <laughs> Thanks, guys. I am Audi. Thanks, Thanks everybody, for coming. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.